Okay, good afternoon, pilot teachers and good afternoon, students. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you. Sit down. We are going to actually spend at least one more lesson on the work on metamorphic rocks, simply because there were a lot of new terms that were introduced yesterday, and I'd like to uh, make sure that you really understood the information that was presented before we move on to the completion of our work on rocks. So we look at um, rocks again today, and we look at most of the things that we have looked at in our previous lesson, or the last lesson, and we'll concentrate mainly on looking at metamorphic rocks and metamorphism, and as well as that, our task or our objective for the lesson is basically to see if we can define some of those words that we have used in our lesson on the topic of metamorphic or metamorphism. Metamorphism. Okay. So we'll move on now to, first of all, revising on what we have covered on metamorphic rocks. And then we'll look at the activities or exercises, mainly defining and explaining of some of the new terms or concepts we have covered. The definition to metamorphic rocks that we looked at yesterday, read from the monitor, and perhaps the information that you have made note of, Metamorphic rocks are those which are produced by the action of heat and or pressure on rock or on rocks of igneous, sedimentary or even previous metamorphic origin, thus changing their distinctive features. So any rock which is put under great heat or pressure and their chemical composition, structure, appearance, etc. changes then we can say that that rock is been changed to a metamorphic rock. Two important factors that are actually involved are heat and pressure. But note that heat is actually great and it is not going to be possible for metamorphic rocks to be formed on the surface because the surface heat is not as great as the heat which is under the surface. So most of the metamorphic rocks, or nearly all of them, are actually formed under the surface. Okay, so with that definition, we also looked at a metamorphic rock owes its characteristic texture and particular mineral content to four important factors. Okay, the four important factors are one, the composition of the parent rock before metamorphism, two, temperature and pressure during metamorphism, three, the effects of tectonic forces, and four, the effects of fluids such as water. So again, if we look at those four factors, they are to do with a metamorphic rock owing its characteristic texture and particular mineral content to those four important factors. Okay, having looked at that information, we also noted that metamorphic rocks can be divided into four groups. And the four groups are according to certain characteristic of which have contributed to their formation. And those four groups that metamorphic rocks can be classified under are one, contact metamorphism, two, regional metamorphism, three, metasomatic metamorphism, and four, dynamic metamorphism. Do we still remember the main characteristic and difference for each one of those? Yes? Okay, otherwise I'll quickly go through that information and part of our activity is going to see again whether you have understood and if you can recall what we have looked at on each of those four different types of metamorphic rocks. We start off with the contact metamorphism. The main or the key um, factor or the prime agency involved in contact metamorphism is that of heat. Okay, so that's the main thing which is actually involved in the form formation of rocks. Metamorphic rocks are making reference to here, of which they can cl be classified as under the heading contact metamorphism. 
The prime agency for regional metamorphism would be both heat and pressure. That's for the regional metamorphism um, information here or groupings. For metasomatic metamorphism, it is to do with chemical compounds added or removed from metamorphic rocks. That is metasomatic metamorphism. And finally, the dynamic metamorphism has to do with direct pressure exerted on metamorphic rocks. So those are the key points that you were supposed to be able to pick up uh, from what we looked at yesterday. We move on. Note also that one of the important agency or factor that contributes to formation of metamorphic rocks is that of pressure. And when we look at pressure, pressure can be expressed as differential stress. Differential stress is simply making reference to force or pressure applied on the rocks, resulting in them changing their composition, structure, and etc. And differential um, pressure or stress can actually be further classified. So here is an example that we looked at yesterday. And that example was on what we call compressive stress. The arrow as shown here on the sample of a dough ball is giving us a sample of what we mean when we talk about compressive stress. You will see that more force is actually exerted in the direction of the arrow, so the direction of the arrows, than anywhere else on the ball, the dough ball I'm making reference to here. And when that type of stress or pressure is applied, then we can say this is an example of a compressive stress. Because we said pressure is an important agency in the formation of metamorphic rock, and pressure can also be shown as compressive stress. We also looked at sharing. And in sharing, we note this is an example again of differential stress. And it is also caused by what we call sharing. And in sharing, this is what causes parts of a body to move or slide relative to one another across a plane. And note there, the arrows indicate that sharing force being applied. And you can see that the arrows shows the direction which are parallel to that particular feature we are making reference to. The difference between sharing and the compressive force, I will explain a little bit more when we go to the information on the chart. Okay, we also looked at an example of a rock which is sedimentary under great heat and pressure it can actually change, but for the ca case of the example conglomerate, which is a sedimentary rock, if it was put under stress, differential stress, you, you can see here that the pebbles which are actually found inside the conglomerate have now been flattened and elongated. And here we are seeing an example of sharing taking place or pressure exerted, as in the example of sharing. Any questions so far? Questions? No questions? Okay, we move on. I'd like to, perhaps at this point in time here, now that we've looked at differential stress, especially for compressive stress and sharing, I'd like to also introduce the word foliation. Foliation will come in together with what we have just covered on sharing and compressive force or stress. What is foliation all about then? Note, differential stress that we have just looked at with the two examples there on the monitor, compressive stress and sharing, has a very important influence on the texture of a metamorphic rock because it forces the constituents of the rock to become parallel to one another. The parallel alignment, 
the parallel alignment of the textural and structural features of a rock is called foliation. So if you come back to this particular diagram here, and if we talk about the textural and structural parallel alignment of those samples, the pebbles in the conglomerate, then we can say foliation has actually taken place. We'll go on to further explaining foliation if you did not maybe get it from what I have just looked at on the chart here. Foliation is also manifested in various ways or different ways. Let's look at an example now. If a platy mineral such as mica is crystallizing within a rock, that is undergoing stress. The mineral, which is mica, we're looking at an, as an example here, grows in such a way that it remains parallel to the direction of sharing or perpendicular to the direction of compressive stress. We know what sharing is. We know what Compressive stress is. Perhaps to help us look at those two examples again. Compressive stress. More force is exerted in the direction of the arrow than in anywhere else on this particular dough ball. And in sharing, you can see here, whereby one part of the body moves relative to the other across a plane because of the forces as shown by the arrow. So when we come back here, when we are looking at foliation, we can look at perhaps the example here now to explain that a little bit better in terms of how the textural or the parallel alignment of the textural and structural features can be actually created. So let's look at the example here as given. And here we are looking at the orientation of the platy minerals in a metamorphic rock. Okay, we start off, first of all, if we have the minerals which have been actually arranged randomly with no force exerted, then this is what the minerals would look like in the way in which they have been arranged. They are randomly arranged, no, maybe perhaps no distinctive pattern you can actually pick up. Okay, if compressive forces or stress is actually exerted on this particular mineral here, group of minerals, then what would happen to them? You look at the compressive forces here. They will tend to be perpendicular to the direction of the force. Okay, you see the force here as shown by the arrow. And you can see the minerals have been aligned perpendicular to the force, the compressive force or stress. Can you see that from the diagram? Okay. Then we go on to sharing. In sharing, you can see that the particles are parallel to the direction of the force. So here we have sharing, one arrow coming this way, the other one going that way. And can you see the way in which the particles have been aligned? They are parallel to the force. So can you see the difference in terms of how the minerals are actually aligned? Whether you have a compressive force or stress exerted or sharing exerted. And in sharing, you note, the particles will be parallel and in the compressive stress, the particles tend to be perpendicular to the force exerted. And perhaps these three diagrams here might explain a little bit more on foliation and as well as that how minerals are aligned when compressive stress is exerted on them and how minerals are aligned when 
sharing actually occurs on them. And this is mainly to do with metamorphic rocks. Any questions so far? Did you understand what I have introduced in foliation and how minerals can be aligned when we look at those two examples of the force of sharing and of um, compressive stress? Yes? No? Okay, if you know, then what is it that I need to actually go through again? From the beginning? Okay, we, I mentioned that when we look at metamorphic rocks, there are two important uh, prime factors that contribute to the formation of those rocks. What are those two prime factors? Heat and pressure. Okay, when we talk about heat, it is ba basically to do with temperatures, right? Yeah. Temperatures would have to be very high for the crystals and for the minerals in the rocks to actually change. That's what we refer to when we talk about heat. When we are referring to pressure, this is what I am explaining now. Pressure is what is exerted on the rocks, and it can be in the form of um, other materials lying on top of the rocks, resulting in the way the minerals are aligned. Okay, if you put too much pressure down, as in a compressive stress, then what would happen is the minerals would be aligned perpendicular to that stress, the compressive stress that is. If the pressure which is exerted is sharing, then the way in which the minerals in the metamorphic rocks would be aligned would be parallel to the force. That's what I am explaining. So when we look at foliation in metamorphic rocks, we are basically looking at how the minerals are aligned. And the aligning of those minerals do not just happen because of heat, no. The aligning, the way in which the minerals are actually uh, laid in the different metamorphic rocks is according to the different forces that are applied. And the forces can be compressive or they could be sharing. Is that a little bit more clearer? Okay, now we come to looking at an example. So this one here might make sense. Conglomerate. If you look at it, it's a rock of which the pebbles are round. But if it is put under stress, then if other maybe minerals are, or not minerals, sorry, if the other rocks are actually lying on top of the sample of conglomerate, then it will flatten those pebbles which are inside the conglomerate. It will flatten them and it will make them look long. And this is as a result of the forces of sharing which has actually been applied. Is that a little bit clear? Okay, now let's move on. Let's look at an example. Here is an example of a metamorphic rock which has actually been changed under great pressure and also heat because we know heat and pressure are two important factors which contributes to formation of metamorphic rocks. Slate is a metamorphic rock. You all agree with me? Yes. Okay, let's look at slate. Slate is a metamorphic rock which has been formed by prolonged heating and squeezing of shale. And shale is a sedimentary rock. If shale, a sedimentary rock, is put under prolonged heating and squeezing, which is pressure, then the soft sedimentary rock of shale um, can actually change into a metamorphic rock of slate. Note one of the important characteristics of this rock here, slate. It can actually split easily into thin sheets. And for this reason, it can also be used for roofing materials of houses. But for it to be able to split into thin sheets, the particles or the minerals in it has to be aligned. And that's where foliation comes in. Let's look at how the alignment have taken place for the formation of slate. We'll start off here. This diagram is very similar to these three that I've explained. See the way in which the rock of shale and how the sediments or the minerals have been arranged. They are random. Can you see that? Okay, minerals arranged at random. If shale is put under great pressure, going through the changes now to become a metamorphic rock, then you can see the arrow squeezing onto that particular rock. Go back to compressive stress and sharing. 
What type of pressure do you think is applied here? It will have to be compressive stress, definitely. Because if you look at the way in which the minerals inside now are aligned, they are perpendicular to the force which has been applied. And under great stress or pressure, then the rock of shale, which is a sedimentary then, changes to slate. Okay, the minerals now are aligned in parallel lines. And because they are aligned in parallel lines, splitting may take place easily along those parallel lines. And that's what makes it good for a roofing material. We understand this? Okay. Now let's look at some activities for you to work on so that you can put all of what we have covered into practice. Our activity for today is mainly to do with uh, defining and explaining of what we have covered. So you have nine terms or words which I'd like you to explain and define. And they are number one, contact metamorphism. You double check again. If you really didn't understand perhaps my explanation today, to make it very short, straightforward, you can use that for your explanation. Regional metamorphism, metasomatic metamorphism, dynamic metamorphism, differential stress, compressive stress, sharing, foliation, and aureole. The word aureole we used yesterday. Again, I'd like to see whether you can pick up and explain the definition to that. So there are nine words. If you want to maybe confer with the students sitting next to you to see whether you can share your ideas, you can do that. But make sure you have your definitions and explanations in your exercise book. Can, they have taken down the notes, so there's no need for us to put them down right there. Just a little bit clear with the explanation also. Yes, yes. words that you're supposed to actually look up on. Is that the words I gave you to? Mm -hmm. That's where we do. Oh, good.
so you are able to identify and distinguish. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the uh, summary of what we have looked at today. And then for your homework, I'd like you to ensure that you complete uh, the rest of those um, activities, especially in defining and explaining. So if we had looked at um, what we have covered so far today, we've looked at metamorphic rocks a little bit more in detail. And from the work on metamorphic rocks, I've introduced the term foliation. I also mentioned or said that in metamorphic rocks and their formation, the most important factors that contribute to the formation of those rocks are heat and pressure. With heat, heat, uh, with heat it is mainly to do with the temperatures. As for pressure, pressure can be applied to those rocks which are under the surface, and pressure can be applied in the form of compressive or sharing. And upon compressive or sharing, then what happens is that the minerals which are inside those rocks then get to be aligned. And in their alignment, that is where foliation comes in. The alignment of the rocks will really depend on, sorry, not the rocks, but the alignment of the minerals will really depend on the type of stress which is applied. If it is compressive, then the minerals will be applied, uh, sorry, aligned perpendicular to the force. If the force is sharing, then the minerals will be aligned parallel to the force. And the example of slate that was given, we note that the force is actually compressive. Therefore, the minerals will have to be perpendicular to the force. So if we look at the way in which those minerals have been aligned, it is definitely perpendicular to the force which has been applied. Not parallel, perpendicular. Okay, and that then will also bring us to the end of our lesson, your homework to ensure that you complete those list of words that were given for you to define. Good afternoon, and thank you, class. Okay, to the pilot teachers, our keyword for today, lesson 58, is metasomatic.